Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome. Um, in this session, uh, let's discuss three theories associated with term structure of interest rates. Here, uh, one is expectation theory, and second one is segmented market theory, and the third one is liquidity premium theory. So, as we have discussed in the previous class, a theory of term structure of interest rate must explain these three facts that the interest rates of different maturities tend to move together. So, look at for example, the first figure here on the left hand side, uh, you can see that one is 3 month treasury bills and other one is 10 year treasury bonds. So, over time actually do not get confused here, this is not an yield curve, this one is not an yield curve, uh, this one only we are plotting interest rate that the of two different instrument that is short term and long term over time that you know we are measuring uh, actually that is at the actually observed interest rates uh, over over the period of time. So, from this you can see that the yield difference actually you can see maybe uh, 3 months, 3 months actually you can see here is that the blue color uh, line, blue line that, that uh, denotes that plots the treasury bill interest rates uh, that you can see the difference here right. So, so, this is actually the term difference, uh, maybe this small difference we can may interpret it as a yield, yield, uh, yield curve means if you want to measure from this point to this point, otherwise uh, this is the, that we have plotted over time. So, here the from one of the inference from here you can see that ok, you can see that there is a difference that actually yield curve that actually measured by the yield curve the difference here, but another thing that over time it moves together interest rates of different maturities that means with the same risk that the short term and long term it tend to move together. You can see that the green line this one is for 10 year treasury bonds interest rates on 10 year uh, treasury bonds. So, both moves together. So, when we develop when we discuss the three theories at least one of them they should be able to uh, explain why it moves together right. And the second one we already seen here that in both the right hand side yield curve, this is in general that means uh, the yield curve tend to that means the yield curve tend to be higher than the short term yield. So, here the short term as compared to short term uh, the long term yields are higher. So, we can also we need to see that the second condition, um, the second condition that the when short term interest rates are low, yield curves are more likely to have an upward slope. Similarly, in contrast, in contrast, uh, when short term rates are high, yield curves are more likely to slope downward or to be inverted. So, let us see whether these three uh, the theories that we are going to discuss where they are able to uh, satisfy, uh, explain these three facts. So, the first theory uh, is called the expectation theory. So, expectation theory states that the interest rate on a long term bond will equal an average of the short term interest rate that people expect to occur over the life of the long term bonds. So, here bond holders <coughs> consider uh, bonds with the different maturities to be perfect substitute. In other words, they do not have any preference between short term and long term. That means, they are indifferent between maturities or terms of bonds with a, that means, bonds with a different maturities. So, in this case, the shape of the yield curve is based on market participants expectation of future interest rates, how future interest rates will be. So, let us explain this one considering two uh, investment strategies. That means, purchasing a one year bond and when it matures in one year purchase another one year bonds. So, in this case there is no preference between one year bond and two year bond that means they are indifferent 
and here the strategy strategy is that purchase one year bond and when it matures in one year purchase another one year bond and another strategy is purchase a two year bond and hold it until uh, its maturity that is second strategy so in order to explain this one what the expectation theory states suppose if both of them that means the investor uh, doesn't have a preference for one year bond and two year bond and in this case the expectation theory say that based on the expectations the there will be a difference between short term and long term or in uh, that means the current rate of interest will be uh, is going to be uh, the average of both so in order to explain this let the current rate of rate of interest rate on a one year bond is 6 percentage and you expect the interest rate on a one year bond to be 8 percentage in the second year that means the first year is going to be 6 6 percentage and you expect that means they expect that in the second year for the one year bond in the second year is going to be 8 percentage that means issued in the second year so then the expected return for buying a two one year is the bonds average that means the average 6 percentage plus 8 percentage that means is equal to 7 percentage so in this case that means uh, just to state in another words uh, if the one year bond in this year is going to be 6 percentage and in the next year you are going to expect that the rate of interest for the one year bond in the second year is going to be 8 percentage so when you buy a two year bond today that means you are going to buy a single bond that is going to mature uh, after two years then the rate of interest that you expect is that um, that means that the average of the your first year interest rate and your expectation about the second year one year uh, expectation about the next or second year one year bond that is going to be 7 percentage here so in this case in this example you can see that interest rate on a two year bond uh, that means two year bond must be 7 percentage for you to be willing to purchase it you are willing to uh, purchase willing to accept a rate of interest for a two year bond uh, is going to be 7 percentage if your expectation you are uh, if the current interest rate is 6 percentage and your expectation about the next year one year bond is going to be 8 percentage this is the essence of expectation theory in this case for an investment of dollar 1 the you are willing to accept interest rate for a two year interest rate today this or two year bond uh, today is going to be your there is the current interest rate plus uh, your expectation about the second year expectation about the one year bond in the second year so you can see here is that uh, the current rate of interest for two year bond today is going to be the average of this one so that means a two period rate must equal the average of the two one period rates so the return on holding a long term bond to maturity is equal to the expected return on repeated investment in a series of the short term bonds so in this case you can see that if the interest rate in the second year uh, sec for the one year bond in the second year is higher than the short term then you can see that uh, when you plot uh, you can see that you will be getting an upward sloping uh, yield curve so further summarizing this one putting in suppose if you want to uh, expand this one to a three year case so you can see that here this is uh, one year interest rate that is the year one uh, year two that is the that is going to be the expect expectation uh, this is going to be this one so year three this is the expectation in uh one year interest rate for two years ahead is going to be this one so you can see that the interest rate for a three year bond is going to be the average of this three one year rates so coming to the expectation theory and fact one that the expectation hypothesis tells us that 
long term bond yields are all averages of expected future short term yields that the same set of uh, short term interest rates so interest rates of different maturities will move together so if the current one year interest rate is going to be i 1t changes all yields at a higher maturities will change it we can also calculate for bond with the long term maturities for n number of years uh, is going to be uh, this rate that means n number of periods so uh, divided with the n number of uh, maturity period so n period interest rate equals the average of the one period interest rates expected to occur over the n period of life n period life of the bond uh, coming to expectation theory and fact 2 we have seen that when the short term interest rate are low yields curve are more likely to have an upward slope so in contrast when short term rates are high yield curves are more likely to slope downward and be inverted so simply when the short term interest rates are low yield curves are more likely to have an upward slope so let us bring expectation in this context and explain why suppose take the case that when the short term interest rates are low why long term interest rates are going to long term interest rates are going to be high the reason here that when short term interest rates are low yield curves um, are more likely to have an upward slope why all this because of expectations if short term uh, interest rates are low that means is below the normal let us bring the concept of the normal interest rates when we say that the short term interest rates are below the normal then you can see that the short term interest rates are expected to increase in the future so that means the all the one year one year bond when you take for one year one year uh, year one year 1 year 2 year 3 year 3 like that suppose in the year 1 suppose the normal interest rate here is for example normal r is for example 5 so suppose the current rate of interest is for example 3 we know that this is below the normal so what we expect in the second year we, we have the expectation that in the next period is going to increase so the expectation will be like that is going to be 3.5 for example or in the year 3 is going to be 4 percentage and year 4 is going to be uh, 4.5 and year uh, 4, 5 is going to be 5 percentage so that means there is the expectation plays a role that means if the short term uh, rate of interest is less than the normal then the short term rates for the uh, second year the years ahead second year third year uh, for fourth year th third year fourth year five fifth year etc is expected to increase in the future and vice versa that means vice versa means when the short term rates are low that means sorry in the when the short term uh, is putting in another words when the short term rates are low people generally expect them to rise to some normal level in the future and that means the average of the future expected short term the short term rate of interest is high relative to the current uh, short term rate of interest right so because we have already seen the average of this one uh, taking the average of this one for example here 3 so you can see that um, when uh, for example, in this case, if you take the average of this one, this is obviously greater than this current year. Uh, so that means you will be having uh, y, uh, you are having an upward sloping uh, in, uh, yield curve here. So similarly, we can also see that uh, when the short term interest rates are greater than the, greater than the normal, uh, short term interest rates are high suppose the short term rates are high uh, then you can see that in the future the rate of interest is short term rate of interest is going to decline in the future so in that case the average you will be getting uh, the average of the future short term interest rates is going to be less than the current short term interest rates and the however one of the issue with uh, this theory is that it cannot explain why yield curves are usually upward slope 
why most time it becomes upward sloping. So, from this explanation what, what we have discussed here is that when the short term interest rates are low then we can say that the yield curves are more likely to have an upward slope. Similarly, when the short term rates are high that means is higher than the normal interest rates then we can say that the yield curves are more likely to uh, slope downward and be inverted. This is fact number 2, but it cannot explain why usually the yield curves uh, slope upward, the, it cannot explain uh, fact number 3. Because of this let us move to another theory that is called segmented markets theory. So, in this theorem the main assumption is that bonds of different maturities are not substitute at all in contrast to the expectation theory where we assume that there is no preferences between uh, bonds of one term as compared to another term right. But in this market segmentation theory we say that bonds of different maturities are not substitute at all. That means investors have strong preferences for bonds of one maturity over another. In other words market for bonds of different maturities are completely separated and segmented and cannot substitutable. So, that means there is clear cut segmentation between short term bonds and long term bonds. And here investors prefer their portfolio to be liquid and thus will prefer short term bonds over long term bonds. So, when because there is a clear cut preference for short term bonds because in the short term, short term bonds are more liquid and also there is less risk associated interest rate risk and inflation risk are less uh, when it comes to short term bonds as compared to long term bonds. And then you can see that because of that there will there is a clear preference for short term bonds over long term bonds. When we translate this one this preference into demand for bonds. You know that when there is a high demand for short term bonds because of the liquidity condition, interest rate risk and liquidity then inflation risk that we just stated here and the demand for short term bond increase. And you know that when demand for a particular bond increase that means in this case short term bonds this means a high price for that bonds that means higher demand to short term bond instrument will cause uh, higher price and that means lower yield or lower rate of interest. So, based on this what we can see that the short term bonds will be having low interest rates as compared to long term bonds. So, you moreover as I just stated here that people prefer short term bonds because of less interest rate risk and inflation risk or oh, this also translate into, into high demand for short term bonds. So, obviously you can see that uh, high price of uh, bond price and leads to low interest rate for short term bonds. So, here the interest rate for each bond with a different maturity is determined by determined by the demand for and supply of that bond. So, in this case what we have seen that uh, short term bonds it has high liquidity and less inflation risk and interest rate risk and as a result its price is going to be high and interest rate is going to be low. So, you can translate this one to easily to rela relate with the uh, fact number 3 because you, you can see that because of the factors we mentioned here the short term bonds the demand for short term bonds because of the market segmentation uh, demand for preference uh, generally prefer bonds with a shorter maturities uh, that have lesser interest rates risk and inflation risk. The demand for short term bonds increase and because of that there will be low rate of interest for short term bonds and because of this you can see that uh, because of that you can see that um, the yield curve will be upward sloping that means the rate of interest for short term, short term is this much, this is for the short term rate of interest, rate of interest corresponding to short term and you can see that this is the rate of interest corresponding to uh, long term bonds. Obviously, you can say that the yield curve 
uh, almost always uh, slope upwards. So that means the segment market segment theory is able to explain why the yield curve slope upwards. However, it cannot explain uh, fact number 1 and 2. The, then another set of theorems are also developed uh, to explain the three facts. This is called liquidity premium and preferred habitat theories. So this is an offshoot of the expectation theory by placing, actually we take uh, first part of the, in order to explain this theorem, we take care of, take into, look into the expectation theory and as we further, we place uh, more weights on the effects of risk preference of market participants in, participants in the long term. So here, what we assume here is that bonds of different maturities are partial substitutes. People in general, they prefer short term bonds uh, over the long term bonds. However, they would like to uh, alter their preference if they have been compensated for this preference. In general, they prefer short term bonds uh, over the long term bonds. Then what we see that if they get a premium for uh, demanding long term, because they are compromising something for if they want to demand long term bonds because we have already seen that long term bonds have less liquidity. So if they want to compromise, if they get a premium for that then they will demand long term bonds as well. So in this case uh, we can see that the show interest rate on a long term bond will equal an average of short term interest rate expected to occur over the life of the long term bonds that is what we have seen in the expectation theory plus plus a liquidity premium that responds to supply and demand conditions for that bonds. So translating this one we can see that the interest rate of a long term bond that is the interest rate of a long term bonds for n number of period I mean, the maturity is happening on an n number of period is going to be the first part this is the expectation theory that the average of so many uh, short term uh, bonds that is happening over the period of time plus a liquidity premium. So this LNT is going to be always positive that means rises with the term to maturity. So that means this part is going to be the this part the first part is going to be the average that the expectation theory what it predicts the rate of interest plus the second component is going to be the liquidity premium. So let us look into an example here in order to explain this one. So suppose in this case one year interest rates and liquidity premium for the next five year is uh, presented in this table. What you can see here is that the one year interest rate for year one is going to be 5 percentage and this is 6 percentage is going to be the interest rate for a one year bond in the second year and 7 percentage is going to be the uh, interest rate for a one year bond in year third and 9 percentage is going to be the uh, interest rate for a one year bond in fifth year. This is expectation, uh, this is the 5 percentage is the current interest rate all the rest are uh, expectations. How about the liquidity premium? Obviously we are talking year 1, we consider that this is the short term in our discussion. So we assume here that they do not need any premium because this is the short term in our discussion. But when they talk about year 2, there the liquidity concerns comes, uh, you know that the second year, a 2 year bond, the second year that means the term increases, uh, the liquidity decreases, so less liquid, so you they need a premium of 0.25 percentage if they want to demand a two year bond, right. Similarly, for the year we state here that this is only an example uh, that means based on the preference of the investors that the holders demanders of the bonds. We assume here that actually for the third year because of when the liquidity decline they need a premium that means 50, 0 0.5 percentage here 0.75 percentage for the fourth year, for the fifth year we stated uh, 1 percentage as the liquidity premium. So what is the uh, interest rate for a 2 year bond in this example? 
so you what you need to do that actually obviously for the one year you don't need any liquidity premium for the two year bond for a two years bond what you need that look at the expectation theorem that means the interest rate for a two year bond is five percentage uh, plus six divided by two that is the term plus for the second year you need a liquidity premium of 0 0.25 percentage right so this is going to be the interest rate for a two year bond that means this is equal to 5.5 plus uh, plus 0.25 is equal to 5.75 for a two year bond so what is the interest rate for a five years bond you can see here that uh, is going to be the average of all that means um, in this case is this is going to be the average of that uh, first we need to look into the expectation theory that means uh, average of 5 6 7 8 plus 9 the average is we need to take the average uh, plus uh, you need to take the liquidity premium that because the fifth year right the fifth year you need the liquidity premium is one when you add this one you are going to get uh, the interest rate for a five year bond the average of this one plus the liquidity premium so using this table we have calculated the liquidity premium and accordingly we calculated uh, the interest rate for uh, long term bonds so this can be also explained using uh, this diagram uh, you can see that the first part this much uh, the rate of interest this with the, this segment uh, this is determined by the uh, expectation theory so when the maturity period keep on increasing you can see that uh, the liquidity premium also increase it, it keep on increasing like that then this component um, is the liquidity premium so you can see that this component is the liquidity premium and the bottom part this is determined by uh, expectation theory expectation uh, theory so this is the graphical representation of uh, the liquidity premium theory there is another version of this theory uh, this is also called the another development in the uh, term structure of interest rate this is called uh, preferred habitat theory this often goes uh, with the liquidity premium theory so a combination of market segmentation theory and expectation theory uh, because investors care about both uh, expected returns and maturity so here according to this theorem investors prefers bonds uh, pre investors prefer bonds of one maturity to over another so in this case uh, investors have different investment horizon and willing to buy bonds with maturities outside their habitat they need a meaningful premium this we can relate that the because if they have a clear cut preference habitat so because of that in order to change it they need a meaningful premium pre meaningful premium so they will be willing to buy bonds of different maturities only if they earn a somewhat higher expected return so investors are likely to prefer uh, short term bonds over uh, long term bonds um, liquidity premium and preferred habitat so interest rates on different maturity bonds move together over time uh, and this is explained by the first term in the expect uh, equation right so yield curves tend to slope upward when the, the second fact uh, this also explained by the premium this theorem the last part the yield curves typically slope upward it is explained by a uh, large liquidity premium as the term to maturity uh, lengthens thank you